Hey, 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 it's Tia, baby. And I am back with another video. So today I'm gonna to be doing something new. I'm gonna be talking about my girl, Lucille Desiree Ball. She is one of my favorite comedians and I've been a fan of hers forever. Now, some of you guys think I'm obsessed with Selena. No, I'm not. But I will take the criticism of being obsessed with Lucille Ball because that's my girl. I'm not obsessed in a negative way, but that's my girl. Not saying Selena isn't my girl, she my girl too, but Lucille Ball, yes. So Lucille Desiree Ball was born on August 6th, 1911 in Jamestown, New York. And she passed away April 26, 1989, 1989, yeah, 1989 in California at Cedars Sinai Hospital. Um, she had like a something with her abdomen, something burst in her abdomen, something like that. But I'm not going into you know the sad part. This um video is about. Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz relationship, marriage, all of that good stuff. Because like Chris and Selena, this marriage also really gravitated towards me. I really loved their chemistry and they were like soulmates. Now, do Desi Arnaz was born in Cuba, um, but he came to the United States, he traveled to Miami, Florida. That's where he first like landed in the US. And with his family, his mom, his mom came over. I believe his dad, I'm not sure, but I think, he, yeah, I believe it. I'm not sure, but I know his mom What? Now, Des, um, Lucille Ball's mom, and, oh, before I go into it, the fact that Lucille Ball's middle name is Desiree, is basically short for Desi. It's D-E-S-I-R-E-E. -E. And Desi's name is D-E-S-I. -E but I think his is Desirado or something like that. But that's really, I just want to point that out. But her mom name is Desiree Hunt. And, or Dolores. But I, I guess Dolores or Desiree Hunt. I don't know. But her mom is French English descent and her father name is Henry Durrell Ball and he's Irish descent. Now it was said that allegedly that Lucille Ball may be related to our first president, George Washington, whose mom middle name is Mary Ball. But it was also said that George Washington had a dysfunctional relationship with his mother. So, mm. so now let's get into Desi and Lucille Ball and how they met and all of that good stuff. A project called Too Many Girls, and that's a movie that Lucy and Desi were working in. Um, well, she they told her about a good looking Cuban kid who stopped the show with the conga drum, with the conga dance in the act of, the first act of that, you know, scene. And then Lucy had to go to the theater to check it out. So she went to go check the show out. And as she watched the show, she could not take her eyes off Desi. She wrote allegedly, a striped football jersey hugged his big shoulders and chest while those narrow hips and tight football pants swayed to the catchy rhythms of the bongo drum he was carrying. I recognize the kind of electrifying charm that can never be fake, star quality. And this was even before Desi spoke a line. So this is before she even knew he had an accent, I guess. So um, Lucy momentarily thought about pursuing him, but then she changed her mind 
knowing that Arnez was 22 at the time and Lucy was six years older because she read it on the program. She was in a comfortable relationship with an older man at the time. And she had to get back to the coast to film Dance Girl Dance. So after the show, Lucy said hello to the Too Many Girls director, George Abbott. Lu Desi spotted her and thought she looked like a $2 whore who got beaten badly by her pimp. So um, I guess how Lucy became a part of the the movie Too Many Girls, I guess her friend I guess her friendship with the director and I guess that's what got her a role in the movie because at first she wasn't in it. I think she like I said, she just went down there to check it out because her friends told her told her about, you know, what they saw on the on on set. So Desi asked the director, who the hell was that? So um the director said um, that was, I guess he told him who she was. He informed that that was Lucille, the actress assigned to play the part of, oh, so he, she was assigned to play the part. Okay, so never mind. So he informed that Lucy was, was an actress assigned to play the part of an ingenuine, and too many girls. So the same movie that he was in. Desi shook his head. The skills of the makeup artist, notwithstanding, it would be impossible to change this rundown hooker into a co-ed. So she was in a, in her in her you know makeup and all of that to prepare for the her role. So not only was her friends, not only did she go down there to check him out, she was also a part of the film. So let me correct that. I'm also reading from, you know, writing down my notes. So some of the stuff kind of got misconstrued. Apology. She went to go get her self made back to her normal self. And that's when Desi looked at her and said, man, that is a hunk of a woman. And the director, he said it to the director. And then the um, director told him, you met her today. Well, actually, no, the pianist told him, you met her today and she strolled by and said hello. And Desi was saying, Miss Ball, as if like he, you know, was like, are you serious type thing? And I guess Lucy heard him and said, why don't you call me Lucille? And I'll call you Dizzy. So instead of her calling him Desi, she called him Dizzy, Dizzy. So at the time he and Lucille met, Desi was engaged to a dark haired dancer named Renee DeMarco, the partner and estranged wife of Tony DeMarco. Renee had been treated brutally by her husband, allegedly. She was grateful for the intentions of Desi Arnaz. So um, some of Desi's friends said Renee was rather like his mother and Lolita Arnaz as Desi's mother, a dark, beautiful, wit willful, person but he paid them no mind to him renee was a jewel and a rare and unique find that was before he had an encounter with lucille ball of course and it's kind of like i'm sorry to compare selena but or talk about selena in this but it's kind of like the same way chris and S selena like started to get romantically involved because at first Chris was in a relationship with somebody back home but he you know and didn't even think to like end things with his girlfriend but as soon as he started getting hot and heavy with Selena he thought otherwise and it's kind of like the same thing with this. Desi's words he described Lucy he was like those damn big beautiful eyes had trivialized everything and everyone else. So he was hypnotized by her eyes. She does have some pretty blue eyes. They like bright blue.
but it's hard to see it, of course in the black and white movies but if you see any colorized movies i mean or colorized pictures you will you know see those eyes so of course you know time went by and they became very acquainted he actually dumped Renee for Lucy, kind of like what Chris basically dumped his girlfriend for Selena. So Desi started calling his new flame Lucy a day after they met. The reason was less, um, it was like more in a more personal level. He was saying he didn't like the name Lucille because that's the name that has been used by other men. Lucy was mine alone. So he was like, Lucy is my name that I give you and I'm the only one that can call you that. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so Hollywood is a town that runs on rumors, of course, we all know that as today. And the Desi Lucy romance had barely begun when studio gossip started odds making um, unsolicited advice you issue from Lucy's friends and acquaintances. He talking about Desi saying he's flashy, he's egotistical, he's Catholic and you're Protestant, he's immature, almost six years younger than you, he dumped Renee DeMarco without backward glance, you'll be next. And indeed, apart from the obvious physical attraction they felt for each other, there seemed no reason to believe that the affair would be, would be any more than a brief passionate fling destined to burn itself out as um, they were saying in the studio and all that. And they saying that it'll burn out basically in six months. So they, of course, they didn't really pay that, no attention to that. So they continued the relationship. Now, everybody was supportive of their relationship like her family was supportive of their relationship like her mom her family was cool with him as long as you know that's who she wanted that they were fine with it his mom didn't didn't speak any english but he loved lucy because of her you know politeness and you know she really liked her but fred hunt who is lucille ball's um granddad was like whispered to Lucy. He said, seems like a nice fella, but he's he doesn't speak so good and he's a little dark. And you know, he was like patronizing her about him and all of that. And this is what Desi wrote allegedly. He said, I, t I told Fred to cut it out or I'll teach him to Roomba. So he basically made light of the situation. Okay, so, in 1940, no, if November in Manhattan, um, Lucy finally finished her Milwaukee deal and came to New York. Um, that's when Desi realized that he was madly in love with her and that she, he knew she was in love with him. So now all the way down the line, In Connecticut, they got married. They first got married in the 1940s in Connecticut. And Connecticut's law required couples to observe a five-day waiting period before taking marriage vows. In order to get around the, the law, he and Lucy had to round up a judge to make an official exception. Once they was done, they still weren't short of a vital, if sentimental, item. Desi had neglected to purchase a wedding band while the couple fret Desi's manager ran to the local Woodworths. That's one of the old, it, I guess it used to be, it's like a Woody's. If y'all, you know, were, were 80s babies and all that, you know what, what, what Woody's are. Or it's another, you know, Hex. I may be a little too old. Y'all may not know what Hex is. So I will say Bloomingdale's or Mar M uh, Macy's. It's kind of like those type of department stores. So on November 30th, 1940, Justice of the Peace, um, John P. O'Brien agreed to conduct a ceremony ceremony at the Byron R River Beagle Club. And if you are a Lucille Ball fan, you will know in one episode, and I love Lucy, 
they quoted that in a episode, but Desi got tongue tied and said the wrong name. I think he said River Bible Regal Club, something like that. He got tongue tied. It was on the episode where the mar it's called the marriage license. So check that episode out where it was said that they weren't married, really married. And so they wanted to go back to where they got married at to get married. So check that out. So it turns out, for example, that, you know, once they got married, you know, the typical Latin men are known to be territorial. So that's what he turned out to be. That's, you know, he portrayed because it stated that, um, that was like a Latin tradition and Desi wastes no time, you know, taking out his, staking out his territory and making demands. So on their wedding night, for example, he shook Lucy awake because he was thirsty. I was out, he, and Lucy said, I was out of bed and running the tap in the bathroom. She remembered before I woke up sufficiently to wonder why in the hell he didn't get it himself. He also refused to let Lucy ride in a taxi alone because it would place her in a close proximity to an unknown male. And it was his taste in food that determined what was on the menu, like arroz con pollo, picadillo, rice and beans, black beans, and not her typical meat and potatoes preferences. Lucy warmed to the role of a married woman. If marriage called for her to play a supporting role to the star, so be it. So she was very supportive of that. Uh, so also her husband, Desi Arnaz, composed a love song in her honor. But I will put the words of the song at the end of this video. Of course, there were rumors, you know, going around that Desi was a womanizer, that he wasn't faithful to Lucy. So according to the book that I've been reading, that I've read, but I haven't finished, it's called Ball of Fire, The Tumultuous Life and Comic Art of Lucille Ball. So check it out whenever you get a chance. You know, the Scrunchers Confidential Magazine ran a feature about Desi's Palm Spring weekend with another woman. And that story, along with Hollywood's unending rumor machine, pushed Lucy over the edge. In the afternoon of the first day's shooting in without the movie Without Love, she drove to domestic relations court in Santa Monica and filed for divorce. In charge was mental cruelty. Even now, however, she refused to say anything specific about Desi's extramarital affairs. She told the judge, Stanley Moss, that the Arnaz's differences were mainly about money. So instead of her saying that it was because of his cheating. She just made up something about money. When we argued about it, he became, he became angry and went away. That was a habit of his, going away whenever he had an argument. We had an argument. We, he always ran out on me rather than staying to talk the matter out. It left me nervous, a nervous wreck. I got no sleep at night at all. Desi did not plan to contest the de decree. He knew that Lucy had him dead to rights and that she could have gone into de damaging detail if she chose to. So he just went along with it because he could, because he was like, as long as she not, you know, telling the public what really went down, he's just going to go along with it. So, but the evening before she was due to appear in court to sign the final papers, he took one last chance and dialed the number at where she was. So allegedly this is the conversation that they had and this is what, so pretend that the phone is ringing. Ring, ring. And this is Desi. What are you doing tonight? Nothing particular. You know, I'm divorcing you tomorrow morning. Yeah, I know that, but what are you doing tonight? Well, nothing special. Well, would you like to have dinner with me? And Lucy said, all right. So he took her out. They had dinner. Lucy, I mean, Desi said that they had a beautiful night. At 7.30 in the morning, she got up and said, oh my God, I'm late. I have to go. And then he was like, what do you mean? Where are you going? And she, he, she told him that, I told you I'm divorcing you this morning. 
And he was like, yeah, I know you told me, but you're not going through with it now, are you? And then she was like, I got to go through with it because all the newspaper people are down there. I got a new suit and a new hat. I got to go. And then she was like, she went to court, got the divorce, right, came right back and joined him back in bed, which is weird. But they were said that this, of course, annulled the divorce immediately because in California, in those days, there was a one year waiting period between the, you know, final decree. And if that, and during that period, the principals got together and had an affair. So they both, you know, slept together while the, uh, the divorce was going on. They didn't wait and the divorce was automatically gnawed and void. So she knew what she was doing. So they reconcile and they, the couple vowed to be different from now on. Desi and Lucy swore to work on their marriage. He would do no more straying. Um, she would do no more complaining. They both would, you know, check their tempers and, you know, they were trying to compromise with each other. So they worked it out. So then down the line, they, um, Lucy wanted to have children and this is like, they've been married for 10 years now and well, some years now. And they still haven't had children. And it was kind of like a you know, back then, that's like the norm. You you get married, you you get married, you have children, you be a stay-at-home mom. That's usually like the thing you had to do back then. And people were like speculating on like, why haven't she got married yet? When I mean not married, why haven't she had any children yet when they've been married for quite some time? So it was like a lot of questions and you know, curiosities and stuff like that. So Lolita Arnaz, who is Desi's mom, said she thought she knew why Des Lucy and Desi had failed to become parents. Um, she said that, according to Lolita, that, you know, Lucy and Desi remain unmarried in the eyes of the Catholic Church because they didn't get married in a Catholic Church that they don't, that, you know, it was her belief that they were considered married. So Desi listened to his mother for the first time in years. And on June 19, 1949, in the local cathedral of Our Lady of the Valley, Father Michael Hurley officiated at the Roman Catholic wedding of Desiderato and Lucio Arnaz. With Lucy in a blue satin wedding dress and matching hat and Desi in a bright white suit eight years after their first marriage with Didi, that's um, Lucy's mom, and Cleo looking on and wiping away the first Arnaz marriage. So, Ed Sedgwick gave the bride away. I guess the dad, I guess Lucy's dad was already passed away or something. Um, Lucy, Desi's mother was a matron of honor and um, Captain Ken Morgan, Cleo's husband, I don't know who Cleo is, was served as the best man. And Lucy said that it was a beautiful ceremony and I believed in it. And at the time, I seriously intended to become a Catholic. I took instruction for a long time, but lost the inspiration when I realized that Catholicism did not seem to help Desi in his life, I guess in terms of his infidelity. So she's like, what's the point? What's the point? So um, in December, um, however, there was occurred some heartening news. She was pregnant. And, Des, and Lucy and Desi made plans for a nursery. She watched her diet. She measured her days. She was careful to get enough sleep, enough protein, enough quiet time. The measures were insufficient. So she was trying to, you know, use every precaution. She began bleeding one night. And Desi wrote, drove to Cedars of Liban, Lebanon Hospital, praying that this was only a minor problem. In the morning, the doctors gave them the sad report that she lost the baby. So, um, yeah, that was devastating for her because after her first miscarriage, the physician had closed off one of Lucy's fallopian tubes. And the team at Cedars had repaired the problem. All she and Desi needed to do was wait three months before trying to conceive again. So 
So the story between of Lucy's miscarriage could not be kept a secret. When the papers, it made the papers and, you know, people all over gave their, you know, sympathies and stuff like that. And Lucy answered every one of them after a while. So after 10 childless years of marriage, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz were pregnant. And Lucy dropped her knitting and woke her husband up and said, we're having a baby. And he was like, how do you know? And he said, I guess the doctor told her, told her that they were having a baby. So yeah, everything went well for the first two months of the pregnancy, but after the trimester in, but before the trimester ended, Lucy was back in Cedars of Lebanon hospital with acute pain and bleeding. She miscarried five days later. They kept me in the hospital for a week. Lucy remembered. She, she was doped on sedatives and stuff. She cried and cried, but the doctors assured her that, you know, she still had a chance to become a mother. So she took them on their word and returned back to work and, you know, kept doing what she normally does. And then eventually she became pregnant in like early 1950. She became pregnant with her first child, Lucy Arnez, and Lucy spelled with the I-E at the end. And um, in California. And so this was like around the time when she was getting ready to start her I Love Lucy show. Now, at first they was reluctant on using Desi to be her TV husband because that's who she wanted to be her TV husband. She wanted her real husband to be her TV husband. But the people that were, you know, in charge of the show was like, they don't think that it was going to work because they don't think people would be accepting of their relation, the interrelation, interracial relationship. But she was like, it's either Desi or nobody because she wanted, she felt like keeping him home Will, will will help their marriage because him being on tours and all of that that's where the infidelity starts so she wanted to make sure he was he was staying at home by you know the more he stay at home the less he cheats basically so she was like i want to basically i want to work on my marriage and i'm gonna do any means necessary so you either have him as my husband on tv or or not at all so of course they did it eventually and she but she had her baby she was pregnant with lucy she had her baby no she didn't have her baby um she was pregnant on, during the pilot if you see the pilot of i love lucy you will you can tell that she was you know showing a little bit but they had like her in this big um nightgown but they did not film the second episode until after she had the, her, her daughter, their daughter. And you can kind of tell that she gained a little weight because that's baby weight. And so, of course, that show is like one of the most iconic shows ever. Um, people of all generations love that show. I love that show. I have all six seasons. And then there's three seasons of Lucy Desi Comedy Hour which is, is they are the same characters from I Love Lucy, but this one is a spinoff because it's an hour long instead of a 30 minute um, episodes like I Love Lucy. So I have all six seasons of I Love Lucy and I have all three seasons of Lucy Desi Comedy Hour and they all are great. And I still watch them to this day. And um, during the second season of I Love Lucy, she became pregnant with their son, Desi Arnaz Jr. And she did not want to, you know, wait until she had the baby to continue filming. She wanted to make, you know, be a pioneer. And she got, she's, you know, was pregnant on the show. And of course, people was like, no, this is inappropriate. This is not what we can't show this on TV. But she was taking risks. She was like, I don't care, period. We're going to, you know, 
we're going to do this. We're going to do this. It's natural. This is something that every mother, every woman goes through every day. Why can't we show a, you know, a pregnant woman? So they eventually agree, but they say that they can't say pregnant because you can't say pregnant on TV. You got to say something else like expecting. So they always say expecting in the actual episode where she found where Des, where Ricky found out that she was pregnant. They, the title of that episode is on Lucy's Infanticipated, which is French for pregnant. So, yeah. I think it's that. Yeah, so that was the first in TV history. She made history there. She also made history by pushing the beds together because, again, back then, especially in, well, I don't know in personal homes, but I know on TV, you can't, the husband and the wife cannot be in the same bed. They have to have separate beds. But she was like, no, we sleep like this at home. This is what husband and wives do at home. We want to treat that like that on our show. So I want the beds pushed together because that's how we sleep at home. And so she did that too. And she didn't care. She wanted to, she didn't want to be like everybody else. So she made TV history by being pregnant on TV, by sleeping in the same bed with her husband on TV. So that I Love Lucy show was like therapy for their marriage, was like, you know, it really helped their, their marriage because their marriage was going downhill because of his womanizing. Like, I believe, even though his mom in the book said that she believed that they was childless because they weren't married in a Catholic church, but I believe she was having these, mis in my opinion, I believe she was having these miscarriages because she was constantly worried and stressed about his his infidelity. Now, I'm not saying that Desi didn't love Lucy. He loved that woman and still to this day before after they divorced he still loved her because allegedly his second wife um Edith looked just like Lucy I don't have a picture of her but I was told I think I heard that from his daughter on one on an interview or something like that that they they kind of resembled each other they both had that red hair the only difference was at um Edith, I think that's his, her name, his second wife name, was much more nicer, was much more, I'm not saying Lucy was mean, she was just strict when it came to her kids and all of that, whereas though Edith was more lenient towards the kids, you know, stuff like that, but she just couldn't handle the, the stress of him being a womanizer, like he just couldn't, he was always attracted to other women, he loved Lucy, but he was just sexually attracted to other women and he's been that way even before Lucy was in the picture and so he tried but he was too far gone and you know she tried to endure it and of course she didn't want to leave but eventually she had to so the last episode of the Les the Desi the Lucy Desi comedy idol was the the day that they got divorced that's why they were so emotional. If you check out the last episode, you can see the that they, you know, she was crying and he was very, they were very emotional because that was like not only the end of an era and end of a show, it was the end of a marriage in real life. She just couldn't handle it anymore. And the, and the, end of the, the womanizing and he was also an alcoholic. So, but like I said, their marriage and their, um, relationship was very rocky, but it was, they really loved hard. Like she really loved him hard and he loved her hard. He just could not get old. He just couldn't stem away from the life of living as a movie star, as a star. And it's unfortunate because even in their older years, they always compliment each other, how much they love each other. They, their friendship became stronger, even though they were married to other people. Um, she was the last person he spoke with on the day that he was, he died because he died of lung cancer in 1986 and he, she was the last person he spoke with on the phone. So their relationship is strong. Well, their, their relationship in terms of friendship and all that was strong. Their marriage didn't last. They, they last for about 20 something years or 20 years, but you know, their love for each other never end. And I would love to believe that they are together in heaven. Now, yes, they married other people, but I feel like they were each other's soulmates. And But he just couldn't get out of that boyish, you know, 
what is it called? Sex symbol persona, which ruined their marriage. Um, but I would like to believe that they're still together, that they're together and reunited in heaven and that they are living happily ever after there. But yeah, that's my love for that girl. That girl is a risk taker and she was very successful. She was a businesswoman. She handled her ish. Both of them ran the company, their own company to produce many shows like I Love Lucy, Les Lucy Desi Comedy Hour and many others. And, um... They were an empire and their, their children became, you know, in the business, doing movies and music and stuff like that. And then they also have a lineage of, you know, other family members. But yeah, I love her. She was funny. She was charismatic. She was like, she, in real life, she wasn't the Lucy, wasn't Lucy. She was very much a businesswoman, very serious about her craft. She was strict to her kids, meaning she made sure they did their homework before they do anything. She was a no nonsense type of woman. She was no, she was nothing like her character in the movie. And that's what her daughter um, expressed in, in an interview. So yeah. And also Desi was very, very wit. Like he knew his lines when he first um, get it. Like he was on it all the time. He never had no issues really with his lines. Like everybody else had to keep rehearsing over and over again. He already, he memorized his lines like that. So he was very, also very focused and very passionate about his craft as well. I just wish that their marriage lasts long, but hey, whatever. So that's my love for Lucy and sometimes I act like her, not I act like her character in my personal life. Like I do, I, I always scheme on things and I always, you know, I don't think things through, you know, stuff like that, but yeah. So like, comment, subscribe and I will come back with another video, peace.